Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you in real time how to paint this angel uh, sitting perched on a little rock uh, in the forest with a lot of green and beautiful light coming in right here with some um, kind of soft sun rays. So this is an 18 by 24 canvas and I primed it in black. It's just an older canvas. Um, and I've got a few colors here I'll show you. We're gonna be using black, magenta, light pastel purple, light blue violet, titanium white, lemon yellow, and sap green. So any other variations of these colors will work just fine. And you can also uh, play up on your colors and add or take away any that you want to. So I'm gonna get started using this large chalk brush. It's three inch and it's pretty stiff but soft enough that I can get a nice blending in the background. I wanna make it a soft uh, light purple and light blue violet before, make it look kind of misty before I start coming in with some of the trees. So I'm gonna just get this a little bit wet first and I'm gonna take both colors and I'm gonna come in right about here and I'm just going to dust. And I like to have fun when I'm spreading my paint around and create little swirls. It's all about the experience of it and enjoying the process as you're creating. Now we're also going to have a little pond down here maybe, some kind of little pond or river or creek, I don't know. So I'm just going to do a little line like this, back and forth a few, and then just a little bit straight down. And then pull across and I'm going to add some more of that light blue violet and purple in here. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow without washing my brush off, yellow and sap green. Pull the two together and I'm just going to go across softly like this. This is just adding reflections in the water. I'm going to take a little bit more, this time loading my brush quite well on the bottom and I'm going to add some bushes. I'm going to leave the space and add some just right down here at the bottom and then a bit like that we'll add some down in here and just start tapping back in here And as I do this, I'm going to start making it look kind of blurry and just blending and twirling my brush around. I'm going to come in from all sides and I'm going to do the same thing. Now it's important to know that when you're working on a black canvas, it's going to dry a little bit darker. So I can get away with how bright it looks right now. We can just go up and down just like that, see? And then it just looks blurry like water. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow, and I still haven't washed my brush out. A little bit of white. Really tap. And it's just part of the brush. So this kind of shows you on the brush how I want the bushes to look. Dark green to light for the highlights. So I'm going to go and line it up just like that right here and add a few back here I'm going to start coming in in this area push and tap and then a little bit of a scumble and dusting around in small little circles to give some of it a faded look. 
and that blurry look. So I'm going to do the same thing over here, push and tap where we want it to be bright where the light's hitting. A little bit down in here, but not as much. It's not going to be as bright down in here. All right, so I'm just going to push, tap a little bit more right there. And you can just achieve this so easily. And that's why it's really beneficial to uh, do some landscapes like this, painting on a black canvas, because you get all of that shadow instantly, saving you a lot of uh, time and work. It's quite satisfying to paint on these black canvases. I've done quite a few. I should actually have a whole playlist of black canvas painting. I think I'll, I think I'll do that after I finish this painting today. So I want this to be brighter in here. I'm going to pick up a little bit more that white and that yellow. And I'm just tapping to get that excess paint out of there. But again, see how this lines up? That's how we want to apply the paint, light or dark to light. more up in here. Now we're going to have a big black silhouette tree trunk in here. But behind some of those branches we've got this beautiful light hitting these all these leaves. And I use so many different brushes um, for painting branches and trees, foliage. I'm just showing you guys how you can um, use a chalk brush such as this to achieve the same look. I will be coming in with my little fan brush here pretty soon to make some of these look a little bit more delicate, but I want to work on um, the tree trunk and some branches before I begin those ones that are going to be more in the foreground. So you'll have leaves behind branches and then you're going to have leaves that come in front of the branches. I'm going to start working on a little bit more light back in here and I think what I want to do is create some light purple um, tree trunks. So I'm just going to use my small filbert brush for this. This is a number four. And I chose uh, the purple and the light blue violet in this painting specifically because you can see how nice they look together. They look very, very pretty together. So I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. I'm going to take a bit of white, blend these two pretty colors together. And I'm just going to start very lightly Pulling in. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of reflection right here. And that's going to blend in just a little bit to these bushes, the green. Now, what I want to do, so I've got a few of these light ones here. I want to add a little bit of light behind them, so I'm taking a bit more of the white this time. And I'm just going to add a little bit like this, kind of just scumbling in. I'm not going to do a whole lot of this. I'm going to be very delicate because we're going to have some light rays that are going to be coming in through there. So I don't want to do too, too much. But I want to pick up some more of this light color here. Very lightly. Pull in. little ripples. Maybe there's a little bit of 
sand right there. I want to soften that though. So I'm just going to take a dry brush. Just pull very lightly across. Give that more of a light, soft, soft light back there. And we'll add a little bit more down here. And we've got that bush there, right? So we need to add some in the water. It like that and then we've got some in here as well you can pull across and also flick down so I'm actually really liking how this is looking already we're creating a mood quite quickly and that is like I said before the reason because we're working on a black canvas so we really feel like this is behind and this is in front so that's a really neat and satisfying illusion to create when you're painting um, I want to paint some more tree trunks now I'm going to make these a bit darker so I'm going to mix up some of my magenta with my sap green so I'm taking two colors that I know are complementary to create a darker color I'm just going to make this a bit warmer. Sort of like a Merlot color. Really deep, deep Merlot. And that looks quite pretty, right? You can see how pretty that looks with the green. And I'm going to come in now. And I can tell already that's not dark enough, right? Because you can see the leaves behind it. So we know we're going to have to add some black to that after and some more green. But that's the right color for what I need right now, right about here. So we'll just add a little tree, a few little trees in here. Turning my brush sideways like this, and I'm just using a flat brush. It's a number 11. You can use any brush you want for creating these trees and branches. And don't be afraid of wrecking your foliage that you have here. Remember we're gonna come in the we're gonna come over top of some of these. We need these to be in front of some of these leaves and then we're gonna put some in front of these branches. So building up layers guys. Gotta build them up. Add a little bit of shadow in here give this some more depth and I know we're gonna have a little rock for our angel to be perched on so I'm just gonna add some shadow in here and maybe create a stone right in here something there some trees back here. Create a pretty little forest going on. There's so many branches and leaves back there, it doesn't make sense unless we have some trees, right? Okay, so we will have one more coming down here. And we're not going to make it too, too dark because we want it to look like it's behind. Now it's going to look even more behind once we add our sun rays in. So you can hear that scumbling sound. A 
with something else right there. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna go to my fan brush, like I said earlier. I have so many choices because I have a lot of fan brushes, but I'm gonna choose this one, it's a number four. And I'm gonna begin taking some white, some yellow, this is the lemon yellow, and I'm gonna pull and turn to load and then wiggle so I get enough there on the end of my brush to work with. And this is when I'm gonna start adding these leaves that are gonna be very bright and make them stand out here in the foreground. So little taps like that. Roll my brush up some more. And start tapping in this area now. I want to make it look like they're kind of turning up like this. Now I want to switch over to a smaller fan brush. I think it might be a little bit easier in these areas here where I want them to be smaller. So I'm going to use uh, number two now. Just for some smaller, more delicate ones. We're going to add a little bit more light right in here. We're going to do the reflection. Right, it's going to be reversed. I'm going to add some, just with a corner of my brush like this. Take a little scoop of white and yellow. Push and tap. I'm going to take some of my green and I'm going to make a lighter shade by blending the white, the yellow, with that green. And then we can add little bits of this color in here as well. Turn my brush sideways like this and start adding 
a little bit of weeping willow type of branches. Just a little bit like that. I'm going to go back to my little flat brush and I'm going to pull lightly like this. I got a little drip there. I'll have to fix that in a minute. Remember this is water down here. I'm just going to soften this a little bit. Soften this as well. Just by scumbling a little bit. add a few little pulls like this start some light in there I'm gonna add a little bit more of the light greeny yellow back in here Another mop brush. I'm going to use my large, really big one here. This is uh, number 20. So I'm going to take yellow and green and I'm going to start adding some delicate little taps in here. Mix up a little bit of white in there. Take a little bit more of that green. I'm going to soften these a little bit back here. So I'm just going to go back to my purples, light blue violet, a little bit of white, wiggle to blend. And I'm going to go across. And then I'm just going to go down. Take a little bit of my yellowy green color. And then pull across both directions. That keeps wanting to show up there. I'm just going to have to apply this paint and really not go over it again until it's totally dry. I'm going to slide my purple, white, yellow mixture here.
gently pull in a flick. Our angel's probably going to be right about here and cover a little bit of that up anyways. Okay, I want to take, I just want to soften a little bit more back here. It's setting in and it's getting a little bit darker than I wanted it to be. So I'm going to take a bit of white with those purples. Wipe the excess off. I just want a really light, dryish amount. Let's test that out. Okay, something kind of like that. Just to just soften it. So I'm going to take another dry, clean one. Go lightly over this. There, that'll probably probably be enough. I think I, I need to have some of that purple in the water too, a little bit more in the water. So the colors are so pretty together. They really should. So I'm gonna take my flat brush again. A little side to side, a little bit more paint. So just a little bit like that makes a big difference, right? Sneak a little bit more back here. And then we'll just brush down really quickly back and forth like this. Working with that paint before it dries too much. Take a little bit more of that purple and create some, a little bit more of a foggy look back there. Before we come over with our tree that's in silhouette, we'll add a little bit there as well. Okay, so I'm ready. These ones need to be just a little bit less see-through. I can kind of see through in them, so I'm going to mix up my no water, it's magenta and green. And I'm just going to add a thick layer like this. Make them just a little bit darker. I don't want to forget about that little stone here stones area for our we need something for our angel to be sitting on so we'll just add a little rock right there and then we can have oh maybe little highlights like this just a little something I'm gonna go to another fan brush this one's zero and Got a little bit more yellow here. We take a little bit more white this time. And this time I'm going to tap with it kind of curving down. Add a little bit more light in here. I'm 
Put that back in here. I'm going to soften with my finger quickly. So these ones can be a little bit messier and blurrier because they're in the distance, right? We're just creating some light. got little bits of leaves and bushes back here. I'm just going to suggest I'm going to take my blue violet with my green and my white. And I don't even know what color I'm making, but I feel like I just need a little bit of that right back in here. And then I'm going to soften. my finger like that. Go right up to the top of the canvas here. And I'm ready to come in with my thicker trees now. So I'm going to take a mixture black, magenta, and green. You can use any black you want. I like to have a little bit of green, those complementary colors, the green and the magenta in there. I'm going to go ahead and add one right here. It's going to go right up and have a slight little curve to it and then a branch. And I'm just using my filbert brush, but you can use any brush that you want. And I'm going to show you how pretty it looks to add a little bit more magenta. I hope the camera can pick that up. Scumble in a little bit in here just for some more shadow and depth. have another one right back in there. I'm going to tap in for some shadows in here. And then I'm going to come in with some smaller branches. So I'll be switching over to um, a liner brush. Add a little bit of shadow down in here just by tapping and then pulling. Just 
So wherever I'm scumbling a little bit of just whatever's left in my brush from working over here, it's just going to bring in some more shadow and depth. So I pick up a little bit of water and work the rest of that dark color out of my brush, I can create a few more branches. without them looking too dark. Okay, to my liner brush. Now I've got a long one that I like to use. You guys see me using this one all the time. Taking a lot of water and rolling and twisting and pulling my brush to load it in the green, the magenta, and the black mixture again. And I'm just gonna start very lightly a little bit thicker so I push a little bit here where it starts from the tree trunk and then I let off. Pull and wiggle. So we'll just put a whole bunch of branches in here making this area look darker. add as many as you want or as, as few, it doesn't matter. It's up to you guys. And then for the top here, just to kind of make it look a little bit more set in there and have some leaves, I'll just tap over with my yellow and my sap green mixture. A little bit like that. Pull in a little bit more. Wiggle and just tapping with the corner of my brush for a few little leaves right in the front there. And let's set these tree trunks in here just a little bit better. So it doesn't look like they're just kind of floating. You want it to look like they're nestled in there amongst all the leaves and bushes. So we just tap lightly like that. I want to add a few more highlights in this area and I'm going to use another mop brush. I've got lots of them. Okay, so I'm going to take a bit of my lemon yellow, a little bit of my sap green again, and begin pushing and tapping. And then I'm going to take white with my yellow and begin adding. More yellow and white. And I'm going to just Instead of going for a smaller brush, I'm just going to pinch the end like this. So pinch, making these ones brighter. Forgot right here. I need a little bit of highlights on these branches. Okay, I'm going to soften.
stumbling off a little bit of this paint that we have here and adding it back there to make it look kind of fuzzy. bit more of my yellowy green mixture. Add that down on the bottom. So I'm going to dry this off quickly so I don't mess anything up um, to add these sun rays. So I'll just grab my hair dryer and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so this is pretty dry now. Um, I'm going to start my sun rays and then I'm going to come over with a few other branches to make it look like this is still in the foreground and the sun rays are behind there. And I'm going to be using my flat brush that I always like to use for my sun rays. I'm going to take my white. And if it's got a little bit of the yellow in there, I don't. I'm not worried about that. As long as it's just a lighter color. And I'm going to need just a little bit of water because you want to be able to work with it. So you want it to be transparent and very kind of a milky substance. Okay, so I'm going to have my rays coming, my rays coming from here to both these bushes. So I'm going to just go for it, line my brush up. I'm going to need a little bit more water. I'm going to go ahead and add a few more highlights in the water here. A little bit more white right in here. Adding some extra light on these little bushes. I'm going to go ahead and start working on this angel. It's just going to be very impressionistic. Okay, so I'm going to start with the wings first. Then I'm going to use my blue and purple with my filbert brush. So those same pretty colors that we used for back here. And she's going to be sitting right here. So let's just maybe add a little bit of something coming down here. I said I was going to do her wings first, but I think that it might be easier to do her body first so I know exactly where to, I've got to line things up. And you know, I don't paint a lot of figures or people or angels. I used to 
um, years ago, but uh, it's not really what I'm drawn to painting, but I kind of had one of those, um, I don't want to say visions, I don't have visions, but um, picture in my head kind of come to me. And I looked at a few different images online that kind of inspired this. So I'm going to go scoop right in here. We're going to go scoop and then right from the other side, scoop. And then come right down. Again, with more of that bluey purple. Right down here, and you can't really see anything yet. We're just working on some shadow areas first. But anyways, yeah, so I just had this idea, and I thought how pretty it would look with this angel. sitting here. Sorry guys, it's hard for me to talk while I'm concentrating, but you know what I'm getting at. I just thought it would make a beautiful image in painting. Okay, so there's a couple of shadows for the wings. And we can come in with, start coming in with some white. I need to squeeze out a little bit more running out of white. And I'm just using Arteza. I've got a whole bunch of different brands of paints that I like to use. Um, I'm going to be doing a painting next week with my Color by Felix set that he just gifted me. Thank you so much, Felix. I'm really excited to uh, try these out. I'll just, I've got them actually right here. I'll just show you guys really quickly the beautiful colors. Yeah, so if you guys haven't checked out Color by Felix, I'm sure everybody has. He's pretty famous. <laughs> He's an amazing artist. Um, so I'm going to try those for the first time next week. But yeah, so I use a bunch of different ones. I like to use... Um, Liquitex, Basics Acrylics, Golden Acrylics, Amsterdam, Grumbacher, Holbein. And I'm just putting that out there because I know you guys are going to be asking me. I get a lot of questions regarding the paints I use. And I don't want you guys to think that you can't paint if you don't have the same paints that I do or whatever artist that you're watching is using because it's not about the paint. I think you guys... Sometimes students get too caught up in thinking that it's the paints you're using. Um, it can make it easier, but really if you're just beginning, you've got to just learn the techniques first. Get the techniques down and then worry about or decide what kind of paints you like to use. I think it's easier to start painting with thinner paints. So more of the craft paints. If you're like an absolute beginner, you might find it easier to use those. Um, that's what I would use in most of my classes. So I'm just adding some highlights to the angel's wings now to make them start to stand out more. So I'm just pushing and pulling off, pushing and pulling off, almost like little flower petals. And then they're smaller right in here. And these ones get bigger. Okay, so I'm gonna Add a little bit more coming down on this side, and maybe a few little feathers that go 
like that. Kind of wispy. We'll just give her a light purple dress. It's going to come out right here, a curve, um, because she's got her leg coming out. So her leg, she's going to have it. Her knee right there, and then a foot, and the space there for a bit of a shadow, her other knee, and foot. Very impressionistic, guys. Don't worry too much. Trust me, if I can do it, you can definitely do this, okay? And then her shoulders and chest. And her arm, of course. Now that arm is going to be behind. We're going to have to build this rock up a little bit higher because right now it doesn't look like she's sitting on anything. A little bit more white there. Her neck and her head. I'll give her, oh, maybe we'll give her some black hair. So we'll just take a little bit of black, go across like this, down. Take some more of the black. And give her something to sit on here. Now for the skin color. I'm just taking a bit of my magenta, my yellow and white, 
And there you go. Skin color that quick and easy. So I'm gonna go over wherever her skin is. I'm gonna add a little bit of magenta here for her dress. Well, just a little bit of something here. Give her a little bit more shape. I'll add some flowers in her hair. So I'm going to do the magenta and the purples. I'm just going to tap just like that. Go back over to my liner brush and I'm going to add a little bit of white to my magenta. This will stand out a little bit more. It's a little bit too dark. Her little flowers there. a little bit more color to her legs. I'm just going to use a little angular brush, a really small one. I'm going to take my purples, Just create a little bit more ripples or folds here in her dress.
trying to add a little bit of a shadow here on the side of her other leg. And then some white. Right in here. Some color to her face. I'm going to scumble out a little bit of this shadow that I've got in here. I used a little bit of black. Cut right in here, and this is where it's really helpful to have an angular brush. So we'll make that look a little bit more 3D. So it really looks like her wings are curving over. Can okay, be a bit tricky to do when we've Got all that wet paint underneath. I'm just taking my liner brush with more of that skin color. I'm not going to do a whole lot more to the face. I'm just going to leave it as is. Go back to these feathers.
but I'm gonna call this one done guys if you want to do a little bit more detail to your angel you can but I'm happy with this I think it just gives a really nice magical soft feeling and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it give this video a like subscribe for more I'll see you next time bye